Let's take a look at the assessment on the second part of L'Hopital's rule. In the first problem, we have a limit, and if we plug in numbers close to zero on the positive side, we can see that we're going to have the indeterminate form negative, I'm sorry, infinity minus infinity. And so our first task here is to write it as a single quotient by getting a common denominator. Uh, cosecant being 1 over sine, we get x minus sine of x over x times sine of x. And this limit is going to be of the indeterminate form 0 over 0. Remember, we can only use L'Hopital's rule if we have a quotient with 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity as an indeterminate form. So we're going to use L'Hopital's rule, take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. We use the product rule to find the derivative of x sine of x, and we get this. And we still have the indeterminate form 0 over 0, so we use L'Hopital's rule again. And we end up with 0 over 2 when we plug it in, and so our answer is going to be 0. On this assessment, points were given for the final answer for, for writing the limit as a quotient, uh, getting a common denominator, and then also for getting to this step using L'Hopital's rule um, twice. In the second problem, we get the indeterminate form 0 times infinity. In fact, in, in this particular one, we get 0 times negative infinity. Um, that's just on the positive side of 0. Actually, on the negative side of 0, this limit doesn't even exist. Um, so we're going we're gonna to rewrite this. Um, we'll write it as a natural log of x over 1 over x. And now we have the indeterminate form negative infinity over positive or negative infinity. Um, really, it's going to be positive, negative infinity over positive infinity on the right side of 0, and it's not really going to be defined on the left. Um, since we have infinity over infinity, we can use L'Hopital's rule. We take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and when we simplify, we get the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x, and that's going to be 0. On this problem, points were given for the final answer and the first use of L'Hopital's rule, or the only use of L'Hopital's rule in this particular problem. On the third problem, in this case we get the indeterminate form 0 to the 0 power. We have conflicting rules here. 0 to any power is 0, but anything to the 0 power is 1. Um, so we could get 0, we could get 1, we could get something else as our answer. So to evaluate this, we're going to allow f of x to equal this function right here. And by taking the natural log of both sides, we can use the log rules to rewrite the natural log of f of x as tangent of x times the natural log of sine of x. And so now we're going to take the limit of this right here as x approaches 0 from the right. And we see here that we have the indeterminate form 0 times negative infinity. And so we rewrite it as a quotient so that we get the indeterminate form infinity over infinity, or more specifically, negative infinity over infinity. And with this indeterminate form, we can use L'Hopital's rule. So we get a quotient here that we can simplify to cosine of x times sine of x, which is 1 times 0 or 0. Now, this is not what we get if we were to evaluate this limit. It's what we get when we allow x to approach 0 from the right of this. So now we can take our original limit and we're going to rewrite it as e to the tangent of x times natural log of sine of x. Remember, the exponential function, natural log functions are inverses of each other, so this turns out to be equivalent to this expression here. And we have evaluated the exponent part of this to be 0, so we get e to the 0, which is 1. In this problem, points were given for the final answer for rewriting the function as tangent of x times natural log of sine of x, and then for the use of L'Hopital's rule here in this step. In the fourth problem, we get the indeterminate form infinity over 0. I'm sorry, infinity to the 0. Um, again, we have conflicting rules here. Infinity to any power is going to be infinity, um, any power greater than 1 at least, um, greater than 0, sorry. Uh, but infinity to the zero power is, or anything to the zero power is going to be one. So uh, we're going to do the same thing we did in the last problem. Um, we're going to allow the 
f of x to equal this function. And then using our laws of logarithms, we rewrite it and evaluate the limit as, of x times the natural log of 1 over x squared as 0 pr approaches infinity. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I did here to simplify the process, I wrote 1 over x squared as x to the negative 2, and then I used one of the laws of logs, actually the same law, law that we use here, and just rewrote it as negative 2x times the natural log of x. So I brought the negative 2 out front. Um, here we have the indeterminate form 0 times negative infinity, so we rewrite it as a quotient. Um, I chose to write it this way, keeping the natural log on top to keep it simple. And so we get the indeterminate form infinity over infinity. So using L'Hopital's rule then, we get the limit as x approaches 0 of 2x, and this is going to be 0. Again, this is not what we get if we evaluate our original function. Uh, the limit of our original function, we have to use the laws of the exponent and logarithmic functions uh, and the fact that they're inverses to evaluate this. This exponent is going to be 0, so we get e to the 0, which is 1. On this problem, points were given for the final answer for rewriting the natural log of the function using the exponent rule for logarithms and then for using L'Hopital's rule here in this step. And then problem number five, we get the indeterminate form one to the infinity power, uh, actually one to the negative infinity power. Um, so again, we're going to rewrite this and use the natural log, use our rules that we know with natural logs. Um, in this case here, the natural log of a square root, this is going to be x plus 1 to the 1 half, and so we can simplify that expression also um, and bring the 1 half out front or outside. And we get the indeterminate form here, negative infinity times 0. So we rewrite it as a quotient. Uh, we could choose either one of these to keep on top and the other one move to the bottom. Um, and in this case, we get the indeterminate form infinity over infinity. And so taking the limit of the top and the bottom using L'Hopital's rule, we get this, uh, which simplifies here. And again, we get an indeterminate form, 0 over 0. So we use L'Hopital's rule again. Uh, the derivative of the bottom is just going to be 2. So that's where the 1 half comes from out here. And this is going to evaluate to negative one half times zero which is zero so we're gonna have e to the zero power here which is going to be one points were given here for the final answer for rewriting the natural log of the function as a natural log of x times a natural log of the square root of x plus one and then for the first use of L'Hopital's rule here. And then finally we have the bonus question. Um, in this question here, if we try direct substitution and put 2 in for x um, with the upper and lower limits in this integral being the same, we get 0. Um, and then we plug 2 in in the bottom, we get 0. So we have the indeterminate form. So in this problem, to take the derivative, we take the derivative of this integral with a variable upper limit. We can use the first fundamental theorem of calculus, and we just get the sine of x, and then the derivative of x squared minus 4 is 2x, and if we try direct substitution now, we get the sine of 2 over 4. One point was given for a correct answer on this one.